To the last paper of the session now, I'd like to invite Nick Thompson to talk on the intelligent use of herbs in animal husbandry. Good afternoon, everybody. It's fantastic to be here speaking to you this afternoon. Um, it is fantastic, but I do feel a little bit like the proverbial pheasant who's been asked to do a talk at the conference of gamekeepers. But um, let's, uh, let me just give you a little bit of background on me, just to show you where I'm coming from on these issues of uh, herbal medicines. Um, qualified from Edinburgh in 1992, I got a, a degree in pathological sciences, including immunology, parasitology, microbiology, and uh, I even managed to get my uh, um, vet degree as well. Moved down to Yorkshire, uh, worked there for three years, getting my, my boots dirty in um, mixed practice. Then moved down to Chichester, worked in mixed practice uh, down there as well. And then I set up my own practice uh, called Holistic Vet, and uh, I work out of Bath. And um, you can find me on the internet on holisticvet.co.uk. Um, really just to say that I've been doing this for about 19 years. It's not, it's not a fad, it's not just kind of a trendy uh, thing that's come up in the last few years. This is serious medicine, I feel, and uh, it's a, a very interesting aspect of things. I'm going to be talking today about herbs and I'm going to be talking about pharmaceuticals. I want to stay, say from the outset that I'm not in any way bashing pharmaceuticals. They are incredibly useful and are actually essential uh, for the management of, of um, animals. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, be talking about effective herbal preparations. I'm going to use this phrase EHP, effective herbal preparations. I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons of herbal um, preparations and I'm going to talk about pros and cons of pharmaceutical preparations. Up until now, it's, um, I feel that herbs, you may have, people may have talked to you about herbs and that they've been saying, oh, maybe a little bit of a con. Um, and with pharmaceuticals, just the nature of your business means that you're concentrating on the uh, benefits of ph pharmaceuticals. So just for the record, I'm just wanting to balance things up a little bit. And I'm going to be talking about the pros of herbal preparations and I'm going to be looking at some of the issues that we have, we, we all have with pharmaceuticals. Talk is divided into two halves. First of all, we're going to look at some aspects of, of pharmaceuticals, efficacy, how well studied they are, and how well the molecules are understood. And then the last half of the talk, we're going to be talking about um, anthelmintics as a particular reference uh, within the pharmaceutical industry. Drugs are efficacious. There is no doubt about that. If I have a headache, I take an aspirin, then I know that the, the, the headache is going to go. If the dog has fleas, I can use a permethrin or a pyrethroid, which is derivative of that. Um, if, uh, if, I, uh, if we see people with cancer, they can be treated with vincristine, vinblastine. These have been used for years and have saved many lives all around the world. Um, and... Uh, if I walk out the door of the hotel this afternoon and I get hit by a bus, I definitely want to be pumped full of opiates uh, or opiate derivatives because I'm a real baby when it comes to pain. Okay? I want painkillers on board. I want the drugs. There is such a thing, however, as too much efficacy. Let's have a look at that. Let's say this is a mare. She's just come over from Ireland. She's stuffed with worms and she's given a, uh, a pharmaceutical wormer all those, all those worms coming out of her, uh, 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 from her gut wall, the gut lumen, will leave them raw and uh, exposed and inflamed, and you may well see something like this, a, a colic type situation. So we've got efficacy, and in her particular situation we had perhaps too much efficacy. Um, this is a picture of Pip. Now Pip loves to run around, as you can see, and the thing about her is that if she damaged her hock, if she sprained her hock, 
And we gave her a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, say uh, Rimadyl or Metacam or one of these, these products. The problem I have is if they're given at, a, at the high end of the dosage is that she's not going to be able to feel that sprained hock. And so she's going to go charging about uh, and, and not rest it. And so something that would, in a Labrador, might take two weeks to improve is actually going to take six, eight weeks perhaps because of the, that, that efficacy element of, uh, of her treatment. So, $64,000 question, question, are herbs efficacious? And actually, yes they are. There are thousands of studies to demonstrate the efficacy of herbs and even now, all around the world, there are many uh, laboratories, universities who are, are studying these things. The main thing that they're looking at is drug resistance and sustainability. Uh, and efficacy. These are the things that they're looking at. Um, they're, they're, they're incredibly important, obviously. I had a little look on PubMed. PubMed is an American site where they have all the medical um, citations, all the, all, every, every abstract, every, um, every um, study is here. And if we put into, um, into the search engine the word herb, we get out almost 6,000 um, 6, citations, okay? 6,000 citations over about 60 years, that's about 1,000 every decade, that's about 100 every year, which means that there are studies going on probably two a week and have been for the last 60 years. There's some serious work going on there and um, I think it would be we should uh, recognise that. Uh, obviously, herbal, herbal preparations are not licensed and therefore the, the, the manufacturers of these products cannot use any uh, trial data in their, in their um, uh, getting the message across in uh, publications that they may use. And so they have no, no incentive to actually uh, do any of this work, which is a real shame. I'd love to talk to the VMD and maybe try and work something out uh, moving forward with that. What I'm trying to say here is that herbs are no longer in the realms of the nutters and the tree huggers, okay? That's how it used to be in the 60s and the 70s, but now we are moving forward. They are incredibly useful. They can work hand in hand with pharmaceuticals to the benefit of, um, of, of our animals. Let me give you an example. This is Cassie, and uh, she turned up on the yard, and she was just given a, uh, a herbal preparation, and within six weeks, she was looking like this. Okay, No pharmaceuticals at all. Just feed and a herbal preparation. And she's looking great. There are hundreds and hundreds of poultry people out there uh, who are using herbal preparations. And you couldn't stop them uh, if you dragged them kicking and screaming. Yeah? They like what they use. They see uh, great results year after year. And um, they've got some very good uh, very good results. This is a fairly juicy example of where we can use things other than, other than uh, drugs. Um, this little mare sliced her shoulder open. She was, uh, she was given antibiotic. It was sewn up by the vet. Uh, but as so often happens, within seven days, uh, she was looking like this. Uh, complete wound breakdown. So the owner thought, right, what can we do in this situation? So she said, um, I'm going to use Manuka honey here. Yeah. Um, so she used daily applications with clean hands of Manuka honey. And after five weeks, it was looking like this. I find that absolutely stunning. And she was in work. It's powerful stuff. It's not just the uh, soft option. Herbs are not just some soft tree-hugging option. You know this because you, are, you SQPs, are selling these herbal products. Yeah? People come back and they say, this is a great product, I like it, I'll have some more, which is obviously great for footfall. 
We're using these things all the time. Even vets are using herbs. God forbid. Yeah? Stop the press. Herbs are, uh, herbs are using vets. Vets are using herbs. Um, Boehringer have got seroquin, which contains turmeric. Vetoquinol, the French company, produced zentanil, and that contains milk thistle, as well as acetanacyl methionine for liver complaints. Okay? Seroquin is for joints. It's a nice product. Equine America have this product called Sandout, which is for sand colic in horses. But actually, it's a very simple thing. All it is is psyllium husk. Binds with the sand, chucks it out the back end. Very effective. And Vetoquinol have got this product called Rubinol, and believe it or not, its main constituent, its only constituent, is rhubarb. It is for uh, small animals. It's for uh, treatment of, of uh, kidney disease. Okay? A rhubarb preparation in the consulta- consulting rooms of vets today. I think that's fantastic. I can't let this one go, I'm afraid. Um, last year, um, Janssen came out with a study, 13-day trial of... Uh, flubendazole versus a herbal wormer, non-specific, and um, they purported to show that. Let me get this. This study demonstrates that with infected chickens, where parasitism was well established, a flubendazole-based product was efficacious against targeted parasites, while the herbal-based product was not efficacious. Now, among about 12 schoolboy errors within this study. Um, One of them was that the study was too short to allow full efficacy of the herbal product, uh, if it's the one that I'm thinking of. And so I'm really sad that that this poor quality type paper uh, was produced. Um, it It was just too short a study, among other things. It's a little bit like doing a study to see whether boiling water is a very good way of producing a boiled egg. Okay, and what happened in this unfair trial is that they they put it too short. So it's like putting an egg in water, taking it out after 60 seconds, finding that you've got a raw egg and coming to the conclusion that boiling water is not a very good way of producing a boiled egg. Yeah, I'm afraid that's the the size of it. The the, 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 uh, flubendazole worked very quickly. The herb was going to take longer, probably. Um, If... If, if speed is the important thing, that would suggest that perhaps McDonald's is superior to St. Jamie of Essex, which we all know to be obviously not true. Pharmaceuticals are very well studied, but I'm afraid nobody's perfect. In the last 13 years, uh, over 33 products have been withdrawn. Okay? They, they are worked up, regulated, they go out onto the market and there are pro- they find a problem and therefore they are withdrawn. Okay? So even with our, our massive knowledge of these products, that we can still get problems. Herbs tend to be much safer. These molecules, these, these uh, pharmaceuticals are very, very well understood. This gruesome looking beastie is vincristine. It is very, very well understood. But even with all our technology, the only way we can really find out how this molecule performs in the body is by putting it inside rats, bunnies, monkeys, human beings, and seeing what actual effect that drug. Because the thing is, drugs are really simple things. It's just one molecule, and they're going into this cornucopia of enzymes, chemicals, uh, enzyme uh, chemical reactions, and it's very difficult to predict. It's like playing billiards with about 20 trillion balls. One white ball, 20 trillion red balls. You just don't know where it's going to go.